Fritz Asher and Edvard Munch um, had a connection. Asher visited Munch, um, he was uh, known to him, they were known to each other, uh, and he admired Munch. Um, and one of the things which he may have it been inspired um, uh, by Munch and Munch's practice was Munch's involvement in the theosophical ideas about color and color as a way to express uh, mental states and internal states. Um, Asher, in addition to being influenced and possibly affected by this expressive potential of color, he may have also been in, involved in some of the ideas circulating among the, you know, Vasily Kandinsky and the artists we think of as expressionists, this idea that you need to be able to represent not just sense, not just feelings, uh, beyond representation, but also senses beyond representation. How do you represent sound in a visual manner? Um, how do you represent motion, experience in a static medium? So all of these concerns were kind of circulating not only in the air prior to the First and Second World War, but also very specifically within Asher's orbit. And you can kind of see perhaps uh, how these ideas were manifested in Asher's work looking in his work following the Second World War. After 1945, he starts to add to his compositions a almost pointillist layer on top of a more representative image. Um, so a series of multicolored dots, kind of almost, it appears as if it's an overlay. In his work, his portrait of Beethoven from 1945, Beethoven's head is almost completely obscured, his face is almost completely obscured by overlapping layers of dots. The background is also filled with these dots and then slightly longer um, dashes um, towards the uh, center bottom foreground. Now, why would Asher do this? And I think one answer comes from this intellectual climate where you're looking to represent either senses or feelings beyond the visual on canvas. Um, ideas that, as mentioned, were connected to Edvard Munch, Vasily Kandinsky, the expressionist in avant-garde circles. So in a portrait of Beethoven, why would you choose to almost obscure your portrait subject's face with these pointillist dots? Well, an answer might perhaps come from if you were trying to represent not just the face of Beethoven, what he looked like, but also one of the defining characteristics of Beethoven, his music, what the experience of a Beethoven composition sounds like. So one way of looking at this pointillist overlay may be a way for Asher to experiment through the evocative potential of color, through these sort of multi-layers of the composition, the figure, and then this overlay with how do you visually represent, perhaps, sound. Not just Beethoven, but Beethoven's work on canvas.